I greet Muruti Wamahai, Evangelist Mutsi. Greetings. Uh, Bongosi, thank you for having me. I greet all the pastors, Abakon and Laikai, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm a child of God. Yes, I'm born again. I got saved in 1996. It was a long time ago. And I'm still pushing and working for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for the love, Mufundis. I was telling him that the first thing that I got when I met you, Nabafundis uh, Balaikai, was the love I felt. It is a rare commodity in our day. Uklangana no tando. Over sometimes, Sitangana Nama title before Smita and other things. And uh, it is important that we, we love one another. Amen. My heart is full. And the Prince of the Lord is here. Can we just pray? Spirit of the Living God, I appreciate your grace. And I thank you for what you are continuing to do. You are God, you are Lord, you are above all. And I appreciate you for grace and truth, your presence and life. Anoint my lips of clay even tonight, that even as we communicate the oracles of God, Spirit of the living God, that you may overshadow us in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. We pray, amen. Can you say environments? environments. Can you say environments? environments? We are here to talk about prayer and we are here to pray. Amen. amen. Can you say environments? environments. Tell you my to environments. Environments. I'm going to start here in Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read verse 11. If you've got somebody to read, I would appreciate the grace so that I save time because I don't want to be paging up and down. I'd appreciate it. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass. The herbs yielding seed, and the fruit tree, sorry, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And it was so. Can you say, and let the earth bring forth grass? And let the earth bring forth grass. Herb yielding seed. Herb yielding seed. Let's go to verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly. The moving creature that had life. Can you say, let the waters bring forth? Let the waters bring forth. Moving creature. Moving creature. That has life. That has life. And so that the fowl. So that the fowl. May fly above the earth. May fly above the earth. Let's go to uh, verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after its, its kind. The cattle, the creeping thing, the beast of the earth, after it kind, and it was so. So where we have read, we realize that God has not, God did not create any animal. God did not create any animal. God didn't create even trees and herbs and plants. He didn't create all these things. And you will hear me. So where we have read, the Bible says that then God said, let the earth produce. Let the earth produce. Meaning that God, what he did is that in Genesis, Unkulunkulu, we create an environment. There's three environments in, the, in Genesis chapter one, three environments. Unkulunkulu, we create an environment which was dry ground. Basically what he let the dry ground produce. Trees, 
fruit yielding seeds. Ne? Ungulumula ya create ne? Ukreate an environment. Ati let the environment produce. Again, this last ungulumbuli. Ne? Again, that is last. Again, that you will hear me. Let's go. So he creates an environment and he instructs the environment to produce. Then that's the first environment. Ne? Verse 11, he said, God said, let the earth bring forth grass. So, ukulumana an environment that let it bring forth what? Grass. Masiagu verse 20, it is, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundant of moving creatures in it that has life. So, oh, shark, name plants. Now, so, uncle listen to someone's in. Ungulungula has dalang. Utale environment and the environment produced after its own kind. All right? So, what am I saying? I'm saying that the power of every believer is in the environment they are in. You will hear me. Listen to this. I, Ungulungulu, created Umuntu. Ne? But maiza bulezinto ishasa nentanzi na zonke lezinto even cows and sheep and so he didn't create he created an environment. But I want you to listen to this. He creates an environment called dry ground and said, "Let it produce and produce." He created an environment called the waters and he said, "Let them produce." And the zakipe is anasu. All right, zakipe is. And every creature is as strong as its environment. So, Ilwani understand the language of environment. And that's why if you go to the crocodile, when it hunts, it hunts from its own environment. What the crocodile does is that it jumps out from its own environment, catch the prey. Then throw it back into its own environment because that's where power is. So, I literally anywhere outside of its created environment. Now you get an eagle. An eagle when it attacks a snake, it comes then it picks it up. It goes to its environment. This snake loses balance because it's not created for that environment. It it takes it up to its environment. Let's say, yeah, 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 then free fall, then it breaks, then can come and eat it. It doesn't attack it when it's on its own environment because it has no power when it's on its environment. So there's a bad there's baby's a good you crow. When it attacks an eagle, Isala, Isala, Lagu, eagle, around the neck, but it begins to bite the eagle at the back of the neck to kill the eagle. So the eagle doesn't have arms like we have. So how the eagle deals with the bait is that it goes up. There are certain levels where other birds can breathe. Only an eagle can breathe. So there's a certain height in God where other believers can exist. And those heights were only taken to them if you have met the maker through prayer. You are all paid sitting like this, but so you, you are only you, 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 your existence yeah. is determined by your environment. Yeah. was trained to breathe in those environments. Oh. So, so this bread stays on the neck of an eagle. Yeah. It goes up and up. Only the eagle can breathe. Only the eagle can, can breathe in and out. But this bird can't breathe. Then it starts losing oxygen. So what does it do? It lets go and begins to fall. So what is it? It is killed by a certain environment that only an eagle can breathe in as a bird. So, environment. that's why whenever God creates, he creates an environment, then he speaks to an environment, he says an environment must produce. So now, the first environment, dry ground, it produces what? Trees and all the things that are keeping on the earth. Second environment, waters, what did it produce? In plants, in Azongele Zinto, waters produced. Now, the third environment, most important environment, Ungulungulma is 
ሰጉል ኢንቫይሮንመንት ኢንደስትሪ ኡኩሉማና ለላስ ሜክ ማይ ኡኩሉማ ና የ እዘን ኢንቫይሮንመንት ኢን አወር ላይክነስ ኢን አወር ኢሜጅ ኤንድ ሌት ዘም ሄቭ ዶሚኒየን ኤንድ ዶሚኒየን ሺፕ ካምስ ኢን ፋይቭ ዌይስ ዩ ማስት ሪድ ዘ ቤስ ፋይቭ ቲንግስ ዘት ሜን ማስት ሄቭ ዶሚኒየን ኦቨር ፋይቭ ቲንግስ ባት ፔጋ ና ኡኩሉማ ና ተዘ ኢንቫይሮንመንት ኡኩሉማ ኢን ኢንቫይሮንመንት ኤዝ ኤ ሊቪንግ ቲንግ አት ሌት አስ ሜክ ማይ ሶ ሌት ሚ አስክ ዩ ufuna ne manzini because it's not your environment why are you using water when it's not your environment so listen the environment ya kunai let us make men it's in god so anything outside your environment is risky to you so meaning that outside your environment you are at risk of death risk of suffocation risk of attacks risk of falling because you are operating outside the uh, presented environment so let me tell you something you take a fish outside of its water it begins to suffocate <laughs> because it's not its own environment how do you exist outside of prayer because prayer is your environment in fact prayer is your breath Every time you go riba sata ni me ke sota your spirit man is doing this is <laughs> breathing because that's your environment for your spirit man to exist so we live in a time where people have forsaken the environment let us make man in our own image and likeness that's why we like dominion ship because we left our environment So any animal that is outside of his environment what is it it is dying yeah. your prayer life is dying because you have forsaken the environment let us look at the scripture quickly ibaga sada la base can you say prayerlessness prayerlessness is sin first samuel chapter 12 verse 23 libaga tala bahani mesta Nimagasi tala bahati nimi. Gone are the days where people are going to do exploits of the spirit without prayer. Gone are the days where people are going to flow in the gifts of the spirit without prayer. We must first start from prayer. Gone are the days where you're going to have your trust upon your gift. First Samuel chapter 12 verse 23. A prayerful person is a person you can trust. because it takes discipline to pray yeah. takes discipline to pray you can trust a prayerful person first samuel 12 23 can you read moreover as for me far be it from me that i should sin against the lord in ceasing to pray for you can you hear that now this is a prophet saying so that i may not sin against god in ceasing to pray for you so a prophet samuel sees prayerlessness as sin so mean that when we don't pray we are sinning it is sin prayerlessness it is not it is not laziness it is sin it is you are sinning against god when you are not prayerful God is not in a business of raising up superstars. He's in a business of raising up prayer warriors. Now, if we can have a prophetic conference, you will see how full it will be. But we have a prayer meeting, we only have a few. Because people love demonstration, they don't like engaging with the Father. And let me tell you, you can't buy the anointing. Either it's there or it's not. You can't fake the anointing and it is only found in prayer. You can fake the anointing you can fake other things in the presence of the Lord but a man who's anointed is a man who has spent time with the Lord So he says that so that I may not sin ne against God by not praying for you what is the heart of every leader praying for the people what is the heart of every follower praying for their nation and their pastor pray without ceasing Let, let's go to another verse Psalms 10 verse 4 so when you walk in prayerlessness i want you to see what you are doing Psalms 
10 verse 4. Psalms 10 verse 4. The wicked is proud in his countenance, does not seek God. Can you hear that? The wicked is proud in his countenance, for he does not seek God. So what is prayerlessness? Prayerlessness is uh, pride. If you don't pray to God, you have pride. The, if you don't seek the face of the Lord, you are prideful. You don't seek him in his countenance. So you are what? You are prideful. Let, let's go to Isaiah. Let, let me just affirm you. Isaiah 30 verse 1. So proud people don't pray. How do you know when you have pride is that you don't pray? Wow. Then you have pride. Not praying is prideful. You have pride. You are full of pride. Pride is not people who are flaunting cars and so forth. Pride is in the house of the Lord. And how do you identify pride? People who don't pray are prideful. Yes. 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 Isaiah 30 verse 1. Let's read. Isaiah 30 verse 1. Who to the rebellious, who to the rebellious children yeah. says the Lord. Yeah. Who take the counsel but not of me. So if you are not prayerful, where are you taking counsel from? They take counsel but not from me. So, if you are not prayerful, number one, you are prideful, according to the book of Psalms. Number two, if you are not prayerful, according to, 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 to Isaiah, you are taking counsel, but not from God. Because prayer, in prayer, we go in to receive counsel. Where are you getting your counsel if you are not prayerful? God bring guidelines. Who's guiding you? Who's helping you? Who are you listening to if you are not going into prayer? Then they are devising plans without who? Without me. What, what does prayer, uh, uh, pride say? Pride says, if you don't pray, you are saying the following. You are saying, I'm self-sufficient. You are saying to God, I'm self-sufficient. I'm self-fulfilling. I'm sufficient on my own. I'm big enough for me to pray. I can survive without you. I can survive without your instruction. That's what you are saying. Whenever we don't pray, we are full of pride, number one. Number two, we are taking counsel, but not from God. Whatever spirit that is causing you not to pray, you are taking counsel from it. So, when you don't pray, you are saying to God, I'm independent, I'm self-sufficient, I'm, I'm ni grand, like ni right without you. That's what you are saying to God. You are taking counsel, but not from who? From who? Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 21, verse 13. I want us to pray. Matthew 21, verse 13. In fact, the verse, we also get it in Isaiah 56, verse 7. Matthew. Matthew 21, 13. Verse 13. Hmm. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. So, so Lapo Ujes, when Magati, it is written, ne? he's quoting a verse. He's quoting Isaiah 56, verse 7. Where God said, my house will be the house of prayer. So, we are equal And have you not heard it is written that my house will be the house of prayer. So, let me ask you. If you go to fish aways, what do you expect to find? Fish. You go to beggar city, what do you expect to find? Beggars. House of ribs, what do you want to find? Ribs. Ne? If you come to the house of the Lord, what must be the first sign? A praying church. At my house shall be called the house of prayer. Not miracles. Not healings. Not giftings. Not prophecy. Prayer. The first sign of my house it is that it will be the house of prayer. Sometimes you must come to services. And when you get here on Sunday, all we do is Rabata, Libe Gete, Nibo Sita. Six hours later, Liba Gata. My house shall be called the house of prayer. And let me tell you, the Bible says that no, you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So where, where, where is God's house? It's not only this house, it's your body. So his house, your body, must be the house of prayer. It is funny that the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is your body, there is no resounding prayer in it. That your body is dry. Before Elijah could defeat 450 uh, prophets, you know what he did? He first erected 
and alto. There was no way he was going to overcome 454 prophets had he not first repaired the altar. So what do we do before warfare? You first repair an altar. What is an altar? Your prayer. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13. It says that uh, the fire shall not go down. You will not let the fire go down. The fire of prayer must never go down. Must forever be burning. You go into the tabernacle of Moses in the most holy place, you would find the altar of incense. That incense was not supposed to stop burning. The priests were working shifts. Others were coming in in the morning, others in the evening, others at night, because God said that the altar must not stop burning. It must forever be burning. Why is your altar cold? Why is it cold? What's the fire on the altar? Did you know that when Goliath fought David, it was not against, it was not Israelites against the Philistines. It was altar versus altar. Yeah. That if you don't have an altar, you can't engage into warfare. Because you don't have protection. You don't have a covering. You don't, and the altar is built at home. Many of you can pray when you are like this because iron sharpens iron. When I go riba sata, you are stirred up. When he goes riba telebe, you are stirred up. But when you are at home, it's when you are working on your altar. That's why it's harder. But when we're here, we can all pray because we sharpen one another. Where's your altar? You are defeated in all the engagements of warfare. Anything you come against, you are defeated. The witches over you are defeating you. In your dreams, you have defeated. You eat stuff. You are, you are even taken into water as marine spirits. In your dreams, because you don't have a strong altar. Any wizard who wants to play, no, they must come to your house. Because there's no altar in your house. If there's anything that the Holy Spirit is exalting this day, there's no revival without prayer. No revival is going to come without prayer. And let me tell you where revival is going to start. It's going to start in the hearts of men. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. If my people that are called, my people, that are called by my name, shall humble themselves. What is humbleness? Pray and fasting. Humble themselves and pray. Turn away from their wicked ways. Then he says that I will. Then I will. Heal them from heaven. I will. Heal their land. Okay, can you see? Before God can move, we must do our part. If my people who are called by my name, they must act first. Shall humble themselves and pray. Where is the spirit of prayer in churches? You go into churches, churches are cold. Even ministers of the gospel today don't study the Bible. They study when they have an invite. They study for preparation. Not for self-encounter. Listen, if you don't have devotion... You are already behind on syllabus. Devotion. Morning devotion. You are already behind. And let me tell you what kills prayer. Is the fact that you have set times. The day you can't tell walala, you feel like a failure in the morning. And the devil does what? He enhances that feeling. So if prayer was around, I'd see his card. Prayer is an attitude of the heart. No one takes in ribata la baga sote. Nya waka nye touch of me posi la baga. That's the posture of prayer. That's the posture of prayer. Ukoleath and David. Altar versus altar. And let me tell you, every altar needs somebody to come and kneel down. Every altar. Let me tell you what happened in that story. If I believe to David, and if Ukoleath is a giant. He's like a demon over the city, a principality over a city. Because he was threatening the entire nation. Every day we have him. Every day, imagine. He's doing the same deed every day. He's twaga. He's telling husbands. 
And we have a child with Uza Exena Santamba. Exeni Baez, I soon to like by a figure by Mlale Lazo Batuk. Babiele move, a market to Batuk and Tamba Baez. Bamlale Futa Babile Bazola Lele in Tamba. Our Pazona Dave. But Pega, when, when David, who David understanding with Lentole, acts into a physical. Where it is with David, we saw go alt. Here's a team. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Otuga Unkulungul. We saw go alt man. Yaman. Who who call it to be one a physical man? We saw go alt with the Otuga Unkulungul. That's the reason. But now with David, guy, if ability went and picked up five stones from the brook, five stones. Ne? Five stones. And Wafaga A1, what tata the four stones was faga in the bag? The gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Wafaga. What you call in the days are you? What to mela one stone of the man who's coming? Because he must first overcome principalities and powers of darkness. What to mela elite? Fa. He Bible literally it hit Goliath here. It's correct to get a helmet of brass. Young Gena with a helmet of brass. Young Gena into his forehead and brain. If I will fool, little U Goliath, as yes, if you mela and I punch you, Nalente, how do you fall backwards? U Goliath, if I will little, he fell down on his face. Yes, the win, the win, the surrendering of an altar. If I will little, at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every name must bow. So what was Goliath doing? He was surrendering and admitting that there's a bigger altar than mine. So I like the way we knew of it. No a strong altar. Never. Never. Bong kept up with my altar. Why? I was on go about to him somewhere. But it's no sam. They mean an altar, they have an altar. So you are trying to fight Zangomic spirits and witches in the area, but you don't have an altar. A good way and a good way, a good way altar. And the altar is in Zan. It's your clock at work. How many times have you been clocking? He let the woods out with his son called Nankulukul. A clock, Nankulukul, it's present. There's a Kuluman on that. Uhan, Sasso, Yabu, and Sun called a present. That, that is the strength of the altar, yo. Uklog agwaku on that altar. Nago mukatele. Uya yagu altu yo klog atu. Just like uya M7 zin no mukatele. Nago altu uya no mukatele. Mau figa uya klog God, I'm here. That's where hearts are open. That's where you become honest. Noba, sifunde no pretend in prayer. Sifunde no go to mangiza unkulu 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 you have learned pretense. And some of you, even when you come to prayer, who said your voice must change? Yes. Who said, Kona e pimbole le prayer? Le pimbole okta nati. Why is there duality? Why, why are there two voices? No more fear who pray the same way. That's why I must fear who alta se We are children, we are babies, we know how to cry. See, kalala hapa. Sometimes if you are go altar, there's nothing to say. Yay. Absolutely nothing to say. Nothing. Your presence, you will be present in them. Invite his presence. We are living in a time where people don't even understand the language of prayer. Let me tell you, relationships are not broken because of distance. They are broken because of silence. Wow. Relationships. No. If in your altar there's silence, not distant silence, yeah. relationships are broken. Yeah. You've got boyfriends at the event. You are still in a relationship now. But the day you stop communicating, so will the relationship end. It distance Ibula. So even the altar, same, same, same principles. Altars are killed by the fact that you are not appearing. There's no voice on the altar. No voice on the altar. So what am I saying today? 
I'm saying that ya zi ili mi mandento ye riba tala ba yo inaman. In fact, ma wifunda gu chud. U chud ati building yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in the spirit. Let me tell you more tanda zange ili mi gwenza galan. Hufana no gu chud ye jimi. Your spirit man, ye jimi, wenza so. He's lifting up. Ugu chid mi. Ma witi riba tala ba 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 ba. That's why you will never be sharp until you know the language of the spirit. Never be sharp. In any gift, any ministry, even your calling, won't be sharp until you get into that art. I go Then a sound drops. You can pray in your own language and you can also pray in the spirit. But it's limited to what you know. Yeah. That's why my utandas you will say he paid the law. I will change your number of calls. Every day you turn as a lady paid the law. My lento le yungu gena guri bata na bagasi telebe. No munga zwa utini. My kona maanza uwa zwa. And I'm asking you, my boy, Altaya. Let me tell you, you wish somebody can just collapse so you can resurrect them. Umuntu wa uazi Alta le. My boy, my boy, la maanza. That's the level of faith. Over you have met the Creator. All things are possible. But we are out the attitude says, "I go in doing again." Say, "Umu do tanda zayunjal." Uza tino angeke si tenge. So you told her for free. And he say, "Ilalele." No, but the words are spoken from a place of authority. Alto. And that's why Lavanda Manjaro Mo Pilanabo, you will think about it correctly. You will think about abnormal. There's an abnormal event. But normal. That's the language of the spirit. Nothing is impossible. Marpe, go to Gatandazi, so you're in the Ranjan. So in the Ranjan. You're with a Pimat. If you budget, you're in the Ranjan calling him. Who said your calling needs finance? Isn't it higher than finance? Is it divine? Is it not divine? Is it not divine? God is looking for a praying generation. Until we go back to prayer, let me tell you, God will wipe us out, all of us, raise up another generation. That will be prayerful. Ungulungul is not looking for performance. You give that person. He's not looking for a performer. He's looking for a prayerful person. Let me tell you, <coughs> here's one thing about prayer that happens. Prayer changes you. You can encounter him and be the same. Never. Be careful that sometimes in prayer, God does not answer your prayers. He's answering correct. You must be careful. Did you know that? Have you ever seen Mount William Tandazui? We are fasting, we are praying. Uguti is in Tos and Zagalagui. Connie is in Tos and Zagalagui as of what is. You know why? God is saying to you, You've been on the mountain praying to me. But you have been praying for me to anoint you. But you have not prayed to me to fix you. So he prays when Zan Mobium Tandazui. Every time your weakness that God is trying to address, you put mine. Ukolungulungulu mara mofike ndlini. Uwentabe nubuye ku 40 days and 40 nights. Uthi ofike ndlini ungena into engakho kuxasule engakho. Bese uqala uthi hey and and that's the reason why Moses after coming down the mountain without anything uqolungulungulu. So because when he was with God he was asking God for to anoint him and all that but agaza akhuluma nge weakness yakhe. So now because he is full of God the fullness of God in him is exposing weaknesses. He has keep a good. And man has keep a good. Man has put me a good pebble to him. So that's why no we am tender zoe. Jibana no moon so kwati. Nenza niya figa la no we am tender zoe. Go so ngoli. It is not the person the problem. It is the Holy Spirit saying that yeah you are full of me but you have errors. That I'm trying to deal with. And the only way they will come out is if you meet another person. No matter, they, they must come out through interaction. So, so, every time when you fast, 
What comes out in fasting? Ugu, five days fasting. Your weaknesses are the ones that come out. That surfaces a lot in fasting. Your weaknesses. If you want to go to the house, you will go to the house. 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 You will go Because the presence of the Lord is trying to deal with deficiencies in you. So, what do you do? Okay, you fast tell a little bit, but first fast for these weaknesses. But they're going to be spoiled by this thing. And you can't walk with God and be emotional. Moses, when he was emotional, he, break, he broke the things of God. That's why my emotions are not going to be He's patient. When Uchahile, he's patient. Uncle is like a grandfather. He's taking one step at a time. Uso na, when Uso le, Kulungu works. That's why Magatila no te no te ikopu te ikopu ya balega na speed. Magatila na ya ja you are too much in a hurry. Let me break your waist. I'm pulala. Ute e o te ikop ne. Magatela la when they break came. He was no longer running. He was walking and limping. He was now on God's pace. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Le calling, le gifting, le miracle, le blessing. Ancient of days. Yeah. 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 Mary is trying to deal with you. But there's character flaws in you that he hasn't dealt with. There are things in you, in your mind. You are, you, you, you know that you have a struggling mind on porn and pornography and masturbation and watching things that you shouldn't be watching. So he's trying to deal with those things before he can elevate you. So he's slow. He probably is even slow to anger. So, so, it will happen within the scope of your lifetime. Yeah. Let's look at the three characteristics. In fact, I want you to listen to this. I want you to know this. A prayerless church is a, it's a weak church. A prayerless believer is a weak believer. Prayerless nation, location, region, province are weak. Weak. Whether we like it or not, there are there are serious spirits that are standing against churches. Yeah. Serious spirits. You have the marine world. You have uh, you have other things. You, you know here. You know Bible Maliti good John first John chapter five. Literally, there are three things, only three, that bear witness on earth. Three, only three that bear witness. Gubi emshavi. Basically, about little one. Blood. Two. Spirit. Three. Water. These three things are the only things under the sun wherein men can form a covenant. These three things are my altar. There's altars in the marine, altars in the spirit, and altars also in the blood. These are places of covenant. Three that bear witness. So let me show you this. So you get three that bear witness and it under the sun. Number one, the blood. You are feeding a system called the blood. That's why every time you and so forth, you are building a covenant. Because this is, you are spilling blood. And only through the blood can a covenant be formed. Number two, spirit. What do they do? Blow. Spirit. Yeah. You are giving a right for him to read your spirit. Yeah. You are saying, I'm giving my spirit for anything you want to do. Yeah. It's like you tell her permission. And um, permission. That's why he won't be able to tell you what's happening until you blow. Because there's three that bear witness under the sun. There must be a spirit. Number three, 
water. What do we find there? You find the marine spirits, the marine world. And these are three things that are standing against the kingdom of God. But Jesus overcame them. Let me show you on the cross. Number one, he nullified that when he bled. He bled blood. Number two, from his side came out water to deal with the waters. Number three, the Bible says that he breathed out and said, and he gave out the ghost. He dealt with the spiritual realm as well. So he became, he, 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 he became, he took authority over all realms. The marine, the wood, uh, the marine, the, the blood, and the spirit. That is why it is through his name that we overcome through all these realms. Whether it's a marine spirit, whether it's a spirit that came through blood covenant, whether it's a spirit that came through a, a spiritual covenant, we are overcomers. The cross overcame all things for us. Let's look at this last thing. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. And now Peter and John went up together to a temple at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer. And the Bible says that it was the ninth hour, which was 3 o'clock. Ne? So listen, characteristics of, of any believer or any church is that number one, you must have time for prayer. You must have time for prayer. You must prioritize prayer. Prioritize what? Prayer. prayer. I'd rather not preach and pray. I'd rather not prophesy, but pray. I'd rather not do all these gimmicks that we see, but pray. The only encounter you will have is when you encounter the Father. That's it. Then, uh, so number one is that we need to what? prioritize prayer. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Ne? Number two, let's look at this. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Characteristics of a praying church. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Luke 11, verse 1. Now it come to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees, sorry, when he sees that one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us what? Pray. To pray. Most of us, most of you, would have asked God for a car, a miracle, healing, but he asked for one thing, teach us how to pray. So what are the characteristics of a strong church? Is the church where prayer is taught. When prayer, prayer can be taught, teach us how to pray. It can be taught. We can teach people how to pray. You don't have, your prayer is, is weak. Five minutes with God, you're already bored. There are people who go on bed on their bed and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Because there's an attack against prayer. Prayer, there's nothing. That will give you the image of the Father than prayer. When you encounter him, you are transformed into his likeness. So far, na Ne? So, so our generation doesn't prioritize prayer. And probably prayer is brought in because Anazi is. Because we pray the weight. Maungen awazutin. Ugu John 3:16. Utinalapa awazutin. Two minutes later, you are bored. You don't know what's next. We must prioritize what? <clears throat> Let's look at number three, X 16, 16. What prayer can do? A praying church. You know, God is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. But God will never do anything until men praise. Yes, Ngulungulu, I'm not begging to beg. Ngoba does, he won't answer. Ngoba, he only answers prayer. Not your worry. Aga penduli worry. Aga penduli depression. Aga penduli stress. Penduli pray. When man prays, God answers. He answers. Here's where we end. We end on worry. And we think worry. My love. You us. God will only answer what? Prayer. Let's read. 
Acts 16, 16. And now it happened, as we went to prayer, yeah. that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who bought her master's much profit by fortune telling. Mm. Right. Yeah. You are kumbula lani? Abu 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 Peter here were preaching and praying and so forth, and 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 there was a child with the spirit of divination and lo moya lo with divination. We told him asun doing. We always always find it. That's why this child was always always around the apostles. And ibo ngatu na abo, u agria na abo. Magati, these are men of God. They are here to preach the word of the Lord to us. So when zongati is agreeing. With what is happening, and it's a spirit of divination. So that's why the spirit of divination is always found in the Church of Jesus Christ. People who are here, it's why these are my false brethren who have the spirit of divination. But that's why be careful of people who are applauding you. Some of them are spirit of divination that are praising you. And why are they doing this for karma flashing purposes, so that they are not trained? So that's why you need a gift of discerning of spirit to discern such a spirit. Paul has a spirit of divination. He knew by the gift there's a spirit of divination and he cast it out. So, so the only way in the same chapter 16, I think verse 24 to 26, it could be Paul and Silas praying and praising in the So the power, the characteristics of a praying church is that it breaks chains. It break, all demonic chains are able to be broken. Let me, let me show you this. In Acts chapter 12, in Bible, there was a man called Herod. And Herod was persecuting the church. Herod, persecuting the, it is, I am to the church. It is some people in the church. He was the government of the time. Persecuting some people in the church. Ne? And only the strong ones. That's why Maumana attacks, spiritual attacks and pushbacks. And so you must know that you are still cold. Yeah. You are not a threat to the enemy. So Uherod now is dealing with certain people. But Ninga Mazalo and Maru deal with certain people. Who has with Nango strong Tila Nalo Nalo Nalo. If I believe, uh, I wrote, raised his hand ne? against U, U James. Against, he raised his hand against two James. And Peter. But he couldn't get to Peter until he first deals with James. Who is James? James? Peter was dealing with doctrine, the weight. James was dealing with prayer. So there is no way he was going to get Peter until he first deals with James. So if I believe to our figure, what touch with James from Bula. Only then did he have the right to prison Peter. So what did he do? He killed prayer before he can arrest the weight doctrine. So what am I saying today? I'm saying the following. The enemy is trying to kill prayer in you. He knows that if he kills prayer, he has killed the weight in you. So Ula Ufunu James, and James, why are you prayer? James chapter 5, James Huye. Uh, if any of you is sick, Amen. call the elders and let them what? Pray. And the prayer of faith will what? Heal the person. If you have, if you have sin, then what? Pray. If you are weak, then what? Pray. In just five verses, summing up prayer. He's an apostle of prayer. So, who is it? Herod as a principality. Maravunu Peter doctrine the weight. First, what did I know about no James? Prayer. Who did let me destroy prayer? Go, no, but it's these prayers that are preventing me to get to this one. So, when the enemy wants to deal with you, how do you know when he's dealing with you, your prayer life will begin to sink? You'll begin to pray lesser and lesser and lesser. And let me give you a key, some of you. Remember when you had a dream where you were eating? Remember when you had a dream where you were shot in a dream? What happened afterwards? Your prayer life began to dip. Those are attacks against prayer in your dreams. Every time you dream of yourself dying, 
person coming and, and, and shooting you and stabbing you, you must check after. Prayer life. Those are attacks against prayer. The enemy does not care about your cars, your houses. If he can just hold your prayer life, he's done with you. Done. Finish. So we live in a time where prayer is very crucial for you as a believer. It is your safe environment. It is where you find oxygen and air and you can pray. You know, Mazalon, the challenges of Israel and Azawen, they can afford that you pray for five minutes. Can't. Those attacks that are facing you, these doors that are closed in your life, your marriage that is going through ruins, your calling that is not yet unveiled, your children that are busy with alcohol and drugs. The fact that you want a job, they want an open door, and you have studied, and it's been yes that you've been believing God for an open door, and it's not opening. Then you come with a five minutes prayer. Your level of attacks must be equal to your level of prayer life. And that's why doors are not opening. Because you even have set time for prayer. Let me tell you what a prayerful person does. Goes in your prayer closet and begins to pray without checking the time. When they check the time, it's three hours later. I'm talking about a prayerful person. Who is not a person who says, your time is five minutes. Riba talaba. Niba gaso de gaso de. Amen, 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 amen. That's why when you are prayerful, when you love God, prayer does not become labor, it becomes a delight. Yeah. Wow. It becomes a delight. So as long as prayer is still work in you, you have not reached a place of connecting to the maker. You know, there are times when I wake up and I say, Holy Spirit, I miss you. Yo, I miss you so much. And I would miss his presence. I would miss him. I, I would miss him so much. You know, one day, this is, uh, I felt so dry for months. Dry for months. And, and, and after months, and I would be invited. I would travel a lot and so forth and go preach to people. When I preach, things would happen. But, but when I'm alone, it would be dry. And, and one day, the presence of the Lord came so strong upon me. And I was like, yo, where have you been all this time? Where have you been? Then he said, I want to show you, I wanted to show you that you're only mortal. That without me, you are nothing. Sometimes we lean so much on our abilities, giftings, and callings. In fact, this generation is in danger. And here's the danger of this generation is that the gifts of God in us are demanding worship. Are demanding worship. You can find yourself operating in idol worship because you are worshiping your gift, Hello. your talent. You have confidence in who you are. Your confidence is not on the cross and the finished work of Jesus Christ. You have confidence in who you are, in your name. You know you can do things and open doors. You know that when I say God, things happen. You have confidence in who you are. But your prayer life is malnutrition and starving. Can we turn our hearts and look for God more than we look for what he can give us. I'm talking about a generation that will go beyond the hand of God to his face. Can we just pass the hand, what he can give, what he gives you? Can you go into a prayer room and not ask anything? Not say, God, give me, give me, because that's how we are, and we think that is prayer. Let me tell you, when you know how to praise the Father, He knows how to take care of your needs. Yeah. You don't have to breathe the word about your needs. He says, even before you pray, I know what you're going to say. I know the number of hairs that been upon your head. Don't I clothe nature? Don't I take care of the birds? How much more my image? So I'm in God, I'm in God. Yeah. Into me. Into God, you've been beautiful. Yeah. You've been awesome. Thank you for health. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for what you are doing in my life. Thank you. Yeah. Give 
He fails in all situations. See, now all we know is complaints, and we call complaints prayer. We call complaints prayer. So prayer can be taught. There is a level in God where when you come in, you forget that you even have problems. The enemy in your mind submits. Depression submits. The spirit of heaviness submits. Because you are with the maker. And let me give you an experiential uh, system that you must use. Sometimes I take a chair. I put it here. I put another one here. I say, Holy Spirit, please sit down. And I talk. I talk what is burning in my heart. No. I'm, I, I'm dealing with the personality of the Holy Spirit. Not with his lordship. Not with his divinity. I'm dealing with the personality of the Holy Spirit because he's a person. I say, please sit down. Put on a chair and I sit. Then I talk everything that is eating me to him. Immediately I start sensing the presence of the Holy Spirit. So mighty. It's like an affirmation saying, I hear you. The, the reason why you don't have a relationship like that with him is that you've been seeing him as God, not as a person. He is so far away from you. And you have been waiting for his coming. But you have not been seeing his appearing. Yeah. Where does he appear? In prayer. We are all waiting for his coming, second coming. But let me tell you, he appears daily in your prayer closet. Sometimes God comes into your prayer closet. Yes, gonna let you touch. Let me let me help you. There's this thing a touch. Utu se you pegi TV. Guba na lento legi. Iti pray. Ne? If you don't learn the art of obedience, if I go learn the obedience of of being obeying that voice, mighty pray. Let me tell you. U pegi into ya kui pele. Utu ya sugu motesias. Kunugulu funa mtandas. Utu ya mtandas. I say kulento le hambi. You are late. For an appointment. Who will respond immediately? And And what comes first? Priority. Test priority. Sure. It is hard. God, yes, I'm going to go to go something. I'm going to go to ministry. The best way to test the ministry. I'm going to go to the ministry. I'm going to test the ministry. I'm going to go to the ministry. I'm test the ministry. I'm going to test the ministry. I'm going to test the How much do you trust me? How much do you trust me? <laughs> Your confidence in the things of the Spirit is cultivated in prayer. If you love him, you will pray. Prayerlessness, if out and us, it speaks to disobedience. You are num number one being disobedient. Number two, you are self driven. Number three, you are full of pride. Number four, you are saying that you are self sufficient. You're saying to God, I don't need you. So what is prayerlessness is pride. So every time every time you don't pray, you are prideful. That's kukumeza. You are full of pride. You've got the biggest pride because you are not prayerful. You, 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 are sub, you are admitting that there's bigger power. And bigger authority over you. You are, you are, you are humbling yourself. But I can't without you. You pray a lady. You pray a lady. So can God fix our prayer life? Can God fix our prayer life? And let me tell you, a prayerful person never zalani. He has his intuitions and zagale elaman. When they walk, he has iminyango ikamangani. 
there's a shaking that happens. That's why a prayerful person can't share. Two altars can't even be in one text. We are going to text in twenty sangom and say, I'm all tight. I got feel. I got feel. Are you a cold? You have a cold alt. Second way, you look at your cold. Mele, Mount Genetics, Uti Lamas, Mount a strong alt, which I one must climb down, and it's not me. Corner Mela is. We had such an experience, Tina. We had such an experience in a taxi, a hamba, such a corner one Mela is. I think what color opposite? Sit in. I see so next. Gusseli Altala, Selling Alt, eh, Melubonara, Luguti, which Alt is strong. Sati every way, a preacher. I wouldn't next, I wouldn't go, but we are Pima Mala, I wouldn't next. Why shall I watch him now? Take you out. Why shall I watch him now? Take you out. Why shall I watch him now? Take you out. Why shall I watch him now? Take you out. Why shall I watch him now? Take you out. Why shall I watch him now? Take you Lilo Ambagdala Kule Alta. The altars that are not serviced. All kingdoms service their altar. Is Amma Mazar service Alam? Tigas, Vines and Vines, good to good with all night. By a service Amma Alta. When we say Lila, I say this next. This one. Altaiako is opening up doors for attacks towards you. It's not even the altar of defense. Because you forsake your altar. Anytime, Mautan does is when we gathered like this. No. Only. Mausuga lao ye kai. Aguna mtana zoguna next. Mausuga son to end only then to you. But, and it about Tandu Boni Sabanga na Malta. A son to end. Tandu Grola la Pabani, le Laba. Ibo Banga na Malta Makai. Mobalento le mele izwe kaya. Mela rolele. Mage zala. Too strong. The person has learned to stand in the presence of the Lord. Learn the art of standing. Moba, we learn in a close and at home. That's the Bible maliti. Uh, when you pray, get into a room and close the door. That's the kuluma ngani. The kuluma, al kuluma ngai room. The kuluma ngai lomnyango lo. The kuluma ngabo wa riba ko. The kuluma ngai zinto sfuna yo and so forth. Now you are them, leave them outside. Leave everything outside when you come to me. Approach me who empty, so that I can fill you. Ungang sunday lutwe eli. But there's nothing to pour. So we come like that. Nye scripti nye sinte. Eskwele indabazetu na ma complaints na boma kelo anabang limaza. Mas figure then we can't be filled because we are too full already. Holy Spirit will repent for not treating you right. We have not treated you right. We've been unfair. We have not been even grateful. Today you are breathing. You think it's a right. It's grace. When you eat, you can swallow. throat cancer, they can't swallow. Their food has to go through the stomach. There are people who can't taste food. There are people who can't hear when you are ungrateful. When you come in this presence, you are just ungrateful. You can just complain about a car and a house you don't have and not appreciate God for the little things he has been doing in your life. How do you wake up every morning? Do you think you have to forget? Every morning, wake up, wake up. I was, the only time we have half death is when you are sleeping. The other day you crawl, so you But But he makes sure he wakes you up. Then you have enough to wake up and be ungrateful. Let's treat prayer with a different attitude. In prayer, we don't complain. We don't mama. 
we come with thanksgiving in his courts. Thanksgiving. Enter his gates with praise and his courts with thanksgiving. We come with that attitude. Or else, you're going to be praying prayers that are not going to be answered. And let me help you one last thing. The rule of the Spirit is that every prayer must be answered. That's the rule of the Spirit. That's the rule of the Spirit. There is no uttered prayer that must go unanswered in the Spirit. Some, some of you, you pray right and you speak wrong and cancel your prayer. God, give me the job. Sometimes that's when I'm seven. I'm seven. So we can send you the whole thing. Abakashani, Abakashani, he fraud. Buy a fagan and jay. We are good five hour prayer of seven. We are canceling one minute. Yeah. Because your speech is not aligned to where you come from. Yeah. It's like aligned. You have been praying one thing, you confess another. And that's how the enemy takes things away from you through your confession. Let us stand in the presence of the Lord. Oh. Holy Ghost, I appreciate you. I want you to open your heart to God. Because you, you have not treated him right. You have not. God doesn't owe you anything. You have been thinking that God owes you. He owes you a husband. He owes you a job. He owes you a house. He owes you stuff. He's not in the business of fulfilling tangible things. His spirit. And he wants to connect with you spirit to spirit. You have not treated God right when it comes to prayer. We are present in other things, but absent in prayer. If you can announce in church, baby shower, all the women will go. We announce prayer, only 5% is present. We announce a party, Yagam Fundis, everyone is present. We announce prayer. Only 5% is present. Because the enemy has swapped things around. He has put what is first last and what is last first. The only way to master prayer is to pray. You master prayer by praying. There is no pill for prayer. We don't even lay hands to people so that they can pray. Let me give you three things that are text prayer. Number one, spiritual slumber. When you are slumbering in the spirit, when you are sleeping in the spirit, when your eyes are closed in the spirit, spiritual slumber, that's the first attack of prayer. Number two, second attack on your prayer life, it's life of sin. If you don't, if you live in sin, you won't be able to approach God. And let me tell you what judges you. What judges you is not God, it's His holiness. Every time you, you sin, that's why He is Holy Spirit. There are a lot of spirits in the world, but it's the only one that is holy. The only one that is holy. So every time when you sin against God, you are sinning against his holiness. And what happens is that his holiness will bring guilt. The guilt is meant to cause you to repent. Yes. But this is what the enemy has done. He has done it to, uh, uh, to seem as if God is judging you. That's why when you sin, you run away from his presence. That the sin must draw you closer to his presence. Yeah. Alright? So every time when you sin, what are you doing? You are violating his holiness. You are violating his holiness. So what shouts every time when you sin? Holiness. The holiness of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy. His holiness is the one that says, repent! You have violated me! Change! It's the holiness of the Holy Spirit that puts the guilt on your heart. And it will never be removed until you address the issue. Ne? So number one, spiritual slumber. Number two, sinful lifestyle attacks prayer. Number three, it can be a spiritual attack against you. And it is rarely a spiritual attack. It's either it's your life of sin or because you are sleeping in the spirit. 
you are slumbering. Remember a, a, a Elisha who asked God to open up the eyes of a servant? He was awake in the natural. His eyes were open, but his spiritual eyes were asleep. He couldn't see the army of angels around them. And Elisha prayed, God, open up the eyes of his spirit so he may see. And the Bible says that when his eyes were open, he saw a chariots of angels around. There are people who are sleeping in the spirit. You are walking like this, but they are sleeping. Spiritual slumber. When God came to Jeremiah, he said, eh, wake up. When Jeremiah was awake already, he was speaking to his spirit man that he needs to wake up. And there is no man of God who is going to pray for you so that your eyes of the spirit can open up if they are blind themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It takes Elisha who can see the spirit to pray for this one for their eyes to be opened. So every time when a blind man says, I pray that your spiritual eyes may be opened, they are making you more blind. Every time they pray for your prophetic ears and say, I open up your ears, they are making you to be more deaf because they themselves are deaf. You need a prophet to activate prophetic senses. That sees and hear it. And the gifts in you don't work for you. They work for others. Elisha, after he died, they took him, they took him to the grave. As they lowered his body, his body touched another dead body. That body resurrected, but the prophet still remained dead. Your gifts will work for others, but not work for you. So he became a gift to this person, but he couldn't resurrect himself, even though he had the anointing of resurrection upon him. So what am I saying? I'm saying that there are things that God has put upon you that will only surface the day you come to a place of prioritizing him. Then they will surface. I will pray for open doors, but you need to learn to maintain your own heart. I have confidence, I know, that when I pray, things happen. I know when things, when I pray, things happen. I speak like Jesus that came to the grave of Lazarus and said, God, I'm only praying so that they can believe. That's the reason I'm praying. But I know that you hear me. And I know that you always hear me. When you have an altar, you walk in confidence. You become partners with the Holy Spirit. Partners. You work together with the Holy Spirit because you've already maintained an altar. Some of you, even ministries are cold. There's no longer a move of the Holy Spirit. And that move can only be birthed by the spirit of prayer if you go back to your prayer closet. And when you get there, be a child. Father, in the name of Jesus, what, 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 be like a child. Say, teach me how to pray. Yeah. Romans chapter 8. For we do not know how to pray. Yeah. But the spirit helps us with groanings that words cannot express. So prayer is not for is not man-made. It is God's thing. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to pray. That's why you don't know how to pray. You need him to teach you how to pray. So that you do not pray amiss. Some of you go into prayer and leave him outside. And you will still come out dry. The Spirit of the living God. He's even telling me about infirmities. Like sicknesses upon the people's bodies. Sicknesses. I know that you always hear me. I pray against sickness. I want everyone who's sick, hold the area. Hold the area where you are sick, where you are feeling pain. And let me break it in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I know that you are well able. You pay. You sickness, you disease. You are under my command and you are under my authority. You spirit of infirmity, under my command. Out in the mighty name of Jesus. I release healing upon your people. Healing in the mighty name of Jesus. I command any spirit of infirmity to live right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, the Holy Spirit is moving in the area. Yeah, yeah, I see him. 
is already moving on the area. Holy Spirit, move on that area. You will feel warmth on that area. Mm -hmm. Some of you, I see, it's like ice. Mm -hmm. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. The pain is disappearing. I see it disappearing. It's dissolving. It's dissolving. In the presence of the Lord, no spirit of infirmity will stand. It is dissolving. Mm -hmm. Move that hand. Move that area. Just shake it. Just move it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is dissolving. It is dissolving. Let me show you. Who had pain? Who had pain? Who has pain? Pain. See? Where, where was it? How are you feeling now? It's gone. Eh? Can you see what I'm talking about? You, you must know who you are. You get to your... Let's get another one. I want to show you. This is not a fluke. Where was the pain? On your leg, right leg. Here, do you still feel it? It's gone. Mama, here. How is it? I'm a kid. I'm a kid. Do you still feel the pain? You don't feel the pain. Can you hear that? I want to show you that if you cultivate a relationship with him, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Sickness, it is just a thing before the presence. If the presence of the Lord can consume you, it can consume any sickness, any disease. But it's a relationship you have with him. Uh, he deals even with cancer. And so they dissolve, all of them, before his presence. His presence is here. Ne? Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, I'm going to pray over you. Even as you pray, I want you to pray in tongues as well. Nimagabo se telebea tanama. Brasta la bagasi talaba ha telekesu. Me presti la gata la baha tolebeha. Nemenge so telebesa. Lebege telebeha tolaba. Brasa talaba ha telebeso. Brika talaba so te. Libaga so telebeso ya the presence of the Holy Ghost is rising. Libaga to lebe. Christo lebe gesa talaba. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Holy Ghost. Ima bosa talaba. Vralo bese telebeso. Ye telebeso. Libreso labaka talabasa. Labaga si talabaya. I break every spirit that is standing against you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the spirit, and the altar, in the mighty name of Jesus. Where you are announced, where your name is, where your blood is. In the mighty name of Jesus. I break that altar. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mi po celebesu. Brosa la bagata. Li bagaso. You spirit of regress, spirit of regress, you spirit of delay, in the mighty name of Jesus, out in Jesus' mighty name, I command you to submit, you are under my authority, you are under my command, in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, move among our people, Holy Ghost, move among our people. Nebega Sita, Lebegas Taranamabasu, Zila Bagato Labayas. Some of you are, are, are attacked by Sangomic spirits. Submit! You Sangomic spirits. Submit in the mighty name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost power. Fill them up with your Holy Ghost. Fill them up with your Holy Ghost. I'm breaking altars that are working against you. I'm breaking the spirit of delay that's working against you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit that are making you sick, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit that are blocking your ways and your success, your growth, your finances, in the mighty name of Jesus, submit under my weight in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, work. Holy Spirit, move in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. <coughs> in the mighty name of Jesus. Elebeso, mi bragasata, lebegesta, mi begeti labasa, me begeto lageso, mi galabasta, me mesto labase, zi labagaso, me beti labaso. Hey! Cultivate the spirit of prayer, Holy Ghost. Cultivate the attitude of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them come back into prayer. Let them come back into a place of communion with you and oneness with you. Some of them have gone astray. Some of them, their prayer life has become cold. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Spirit of the living God, that the altar may begin to burn. I speak the fire on the altar. Fire on the altar. Fire on the altar. <laughs> Lebegeso, mi bagaso na ba, mi bragasi talabasi, mi magaso na ba yara na ba ba ba. And the Holy Spirit will say, until you come back to your altar, things will never be all right. Until you reconstruct and rebuild the altar, things will never be all right, says the Spirit of the living God. He says that I must tell you that I'm raising up a praying generation, a praying people in these last days, says the Spirit of the living God. It is time that my people must begin to call upon my name, and I will ascend, says the Spirit of the Lord, and this generation will begin to experience revival in the mighty name of Jesus. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that, come back to Zion, come back to higher heights, O Zion. The place you forsook, the place you moved away from. Remember how I used to move mightily in your life. Remember how I used to do things in your life. <laughs> He says, even as you begin to rebuild your prayer life, I will begin to remember you once again. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. And the Lord remembered Noah, and the Lord remembered Abraham, and the Lord remembered Lazarus. And the Lord says that I must tell you that I'm beginning to remember you. I'm remembering you. I'm remembering you. You're coming in my thoughts. You're coming back into my mind, says the Spirit of the living God. Yes, the Spirit of the living God says, daughter and my son, I've been missing your voice in prayer. I've been looking for you in prayer. I've been longing for your voice in prayer. Remember how you used to cry before my presence. Remember how you used to do things in my presence. Remember how you used to lie prostrate in my presence. And now you are no more on the altar. And God is saying that I must tell you, return. Return. If you want oil again, go back into prayer. If you want the anointing, go back into prayer. Remember how I used to lose you. Go back to prayer. Go back to prayer. Yeah, 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 to say. Yeah, to say, Labasa. 
Make a soul about Make a laba so telebesa. Make a lebegasi talabase. Bress or telebegasi talaba. Nende de lebeso. Kelebesote. Me press in lapo. Brigade sita. Tolebegeta. Lega bisoto. Brigade la passa. Falaka so lebeso. Me keto salabasa. La kese peke sote. Hipaka la passa talaba. Lehe sote. Lebe sote. Lebe gosita. Tele ke sote. He me peso la kase. Ne to se ke pose. He gosita la baso. Prato la baka sote le besa. La kato se peso. Priso le beke sita la bayate. Me peki la basete le beso. Ata la basita la base. I baka so le bese. Hey, hey. Hey. Yay. Holy Ghost, we bless you. Holy Ghost, we appreciate you. Somebody with a chest issue. It's as if you are getting blocked and, and sometimes there's a pain on your chest. Can I pray for you? A chest issue. Can I pray for you? A chest issue. Can I pray for you? Nibagas yalabaha no mea.